Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to The Nonprofits. This show is brought to you by the Atheist Community of Austin, Texas. I'm your host, Jeff D. My co-hosts are Vic Farrow hey. and Karen Glasser, sitting in for Mary McManamy. Only not sitting at the moment. She's away, <laughs> away from the mic at the moment. Uh, and uh, we, Mary might be showing up at some point. We're just not sure. And uh, our producer, once again, is uh, Russell Glasser. Today's opening music was Planet Earth by Devo. We are live. This is August 24, 2002. There's I'm here. Hi. Returning to the table. There you go. Uh, the Atheist Community of Austin is a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We have weekly meetings Sunday mornings here in Austin, Texas at the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop at 307 West 5th Street at 10.30 a.m. except for the first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series at 11 a.m. in the Longhorn Room of Furs Cafeteria at North Cross Mall. Our next lecture is going to be on September 1. Anybody know what the next lecture is going to be? Not a clue. Do we have anything arranged? Uh, ACA board meetings take place at 10 a.m. right before the regular meeting on the second Sunday of every month. These meetings are open to all ACA members, but you can only vote if you're on the board of directors. Though, tomorrow, there's going to be a special session of the board of directors to plan for our upcoming September 11 memorial. If you shop at the Randall's Food Store chain, you can give them our nonprofit organization number, which is 5158, and 1% of your purchase will automatically be donated to the Atheist Community of Boston. The Godless Gamers meet Monday nights at 7 p.m. here at Glasser Studios. ACA Happy Hour takes place at Antonio's near Highway 35 and 183 every Thursday night at 7.30. If you get there and don't see anybody else around, just uh, wait, because people trickle in as the night goes on. Anybody been going to Happy Hour from our group here? Missed it last group? Thursday, but I usually go yeah. almost all the time. Still going strong? Yeah. yeah Matt and I haven't been. gone for a while. because We I'm usually gone. have a crowd of about 10 to 15, depending. Yeah. That's always a good time. For more information, you can call our voicemail at area code 512-371-2911 or visit our website at www.atheist-community.org. Okay, <clears throat> that's all that stuff out of the way. Now, we have a little bit of old business here. Uh, I it, Last week, I read some of our correspondence emails that we've gotten from listeners to the show, but I missed one, and I had it in my notes from a previous episode, and I don't think we ever got around to it. Uh, from TBT on the subject of atheist housing discrimination. Um, it says, I'm emailing in reference to a tidbit on one of your recent radio shows about atheists a, uh, being legally kicked out of housing for being atheist. Do you have any references regarding that? Did we say that? Oh, it's signed TIA. T-I-A. Do we, did we say that? I don't remember I don't us remember ever saying something. about that, but... You work in the... In no, the, you can't do that. That's a violation sector. of the fair housing... If you ever get caught doing something like that, that's a, at least a $10,000 fine, and uh, you're probably going to get sued, and they're going to win. So, so Tia, we're not sure where you got that idea, but um, whatever it was we said, that's not what we meant. And uh, right. then the fact is that at least we know for sure here in Texas. Uh, well, no, this is national. It's a violation of the civil rights law. Wow. It's called fair housing. Ah. There are seven protected classes. Religion is amongst them. And if you were discriminated against being an atheist, that would still qualify under the religion. Cool, because you're, you would be particularly you'd be finding a reason to reject somebody for rental yeah. due to anything other than the fact that they qualify to pay the rent. Right, right. And you can't do that. And so it's pretty cool. helpful to have somebody here who knows what the hell it's a big freaking deal, and all apartments are scared to death of it. So. All right, so uh, hang your atheist shingle out at your apartment complex because they can't do a damn thing about it. <laughs> uh, now let's do. Well, some they can't do anything about someone coming by and keying up your car either. So. Well, yeah, but they can't kick you out. They can't kick you out, though. Um, who wants to do news first? Uh, I guess I will start with the news, okay. uh, because they have a couple of things going on. Okay. One, in uh, Cobb County, Georgia, uh -huh. second largest school district uh, in that area, has adopted a policy that requires teachers to give a, quote, balanced education about the origins of life, giving equal weight to evolution and biblical interpreta interpretations. And I might say, if they're going to do that, why not just go ahead and add the Aborigine dream time to the, to the list of things? Hell, yeah. Equal time Absolutely. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, hey, we could come up with some goofy ones. <clears throat> um, the district, Cobb County, has already come under attack this summer for attaching disclaimers to all science textbooks saying that evolution is, quote, a theory, not a fact, and a, uh, it should be approached with an 
open mind, studied carefully, and critically considered. And on Wednesday, a parent at the Georgia chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union filed a lawsuit demanding that disclaimers be removed. And the day after this uh, uh, adoption of a new policy, uh-huh. the ACLU is now going to amend the suit to ask the court to reverse this new policy. Right. But following the vote, George O'Neill, who is a board member, uh, led his colleagues in a prayer. <laughs> Uh-huh. Saying, oh, wait a minute. Is this the, the, from, from Georgia? I, I have a version of this story here which says uh, board members said they were not restricting the teaching of evolution or encouraging the teach, teaching of creationism. Right. The policy they said was simply a reflection of the district, district's philosophy of teaching a wide range, range of range ideas, yeah. Yeah. which they followed yeah. by yeah. having a prayer. Right. Uh huh. Disputing views of an That's academic nice. subject, including the origin, origin of species. But you don't oh, dispute boy. an academic subject, but bringing, uh, well, I guess, you know, you could consider religion academic, some vague term, I don't know. I, uh, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> the many parents that packed the board meeting uh, said this was a back route to teaching religion in schools, and they implored the board members not to adopt the policy, saying that it would dilute the quality of science education and make graduates of the district, which is in North Atlanta, a laughing stop of stock of college admission offices. Yeah, that's exactly what happened in Kansas. Mm-hmm. And Kansas knows all well that they just uh, reinstated the teaching of evolution last year after striking it from the science curriculum two years earlier. Yeah. And still, conservatives on the board have promised to revive the issue. <laughs> and the candidate and a candidate for the board who opposes the teaching of evolution won a recent primary by a wide margin. We won't stop till they won't take our kids at no college nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Ohio. The State Board of Education is considering a science curriculum that would teach intelligent design. We all know how wacky that is. Um, d- discussing the Cobb County policy information informally over the last few weeks, board members said that they were responding to the community's demand to teach a broader range of uh, views in the science classes. Uh-huh. This is, uh, I'll take a vote on what science. You can't do that. No. It's not can't. public opinion as to what is science. It's up to science to determine what is science. And teaching science should be about teaching science, not about public opinion. That's political class. Right. All right. Um, um, how many states is it that there, is this now that they've tried to pull this in? There's Ohio, Kansas, oh, Alabama. Uh, uh, there was some talk in Texas, but I don't think it ever got anywhere past talk. Yeah, they lose resoundingly every single time, yeah. but they keep on bringing the same cases up in every single state, thinking, well, there's 50 states, you know, yeah. we're, we're, well, we got to win somewhere. The same. That's the same reason that... Uh, uh, creation science evolves into intelligent design. They don't change what they're actually telling you. They just reword it. That's right. It's all it's all political maneuver. Well, I'm not even no, sure they. Eyes. I'm not even sure they've reworded it. They've just <laughs> well, thrown thrown <laughs> crap just at as many places as the wall. Right. right. Well, it's essentially, it's a revision of how they. Express yeah, I mean, it. because if you read the disclaimer in the textbooks in this state, yeah. uh, this is the exact same disclaimer that they were using mm-hmm. in all yeah, the it other is. states. It's exactly the same. Maybe they realize that it's not going to pass anymore, but they just kind of want to keep the issue in the news. Well, right. you know, I am very That's suspicious about strategy. that. It seems to me what they're, it's not, I, I think it's even slimier than that, than, than the web strategy, Russell. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the web strategy. Um, because what they accomplish when they keep these kinds of issues open and whip them up, whip their followers into a frenzy, over these kinds of things, and they can then pass the collection plate. Do you think every single one of those bo- dollars makes it to lawsuits? No, of course not. No. no. I don't think so either. I think that... I don't a, care if I they think to a large extent, But I think to a large extent, the reason why they're whipping this frenzy up is so that they can motivate their, their uh, parishioners to give more. It increases the income of the people running the churches. Well, I find that less sinister than trying less to support Less sinister? Because <laughs> that's good on its greed. <laughs> Instead of just flat-out stupidity, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I find <laughs> stupidity much more terif- uh, much uh, less terrifying than greed. I find Stup- the active attempt to spread and increase the, st- the amount of stupidity in the country much more terrifying mm. than trying mm. to fleece some people who've already decided that they believe in something stupid. Huh. Well, I guess we have different uh, priorities then. <laughs> Either way, it's a bad thing. Uh, well, yeah. Well, but, well maybe know, it's not about stupidity or greed. Maybe it's just about fame. Maybe they just want publicity. Yeah, but but why, do you, why does anybody want publicity? They want publicity so that they can turn that into success. Yeah, but, I mean, fleecing these people is, is self-limiting in a way. I mean, 
you know, there are these people who are already going to those churches, and they're already giving the money. They're, that's right. But it if is they're self actively living. out and there, if they're actively yeah. out there spreading the stupidity, then they're going to have more people in there giving yeah. money. Yeah, but why are they out there actually spreading, spreading the stupidity? Because you're exactly right. It is self-limiting. Once they have drained the financial veins of all of their existing parishioners, they need to get a new crop. They need to make sure that the, the sons and daughters of those par parishioners keep going to the yeah. church and coughing up their cash. This is why they've moved from simply lying to their parishioners to lying to the country in general and trying to, try to grab the reins of power. So it's just like that tobacco and use, commercial. And using the government says, to help them get their next wave of income. It's just like the tobacco commercial where they say that the tobacco companies have to addict a certain number of people just to replace the ones that die. <laughs> 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 um, well, um, I have a story. Okay. Uh, the Pope, remember him? Oh, I've heard He's a few still things. alive. <laughs> That's not the story. Really. <laughs> Darn it. That's not the story. Hmm. But. I'm not going to go there. I don't, want to wish, I don't wish the Pope dead. No, me neither. But now that he's real quiet, it's kind of better. Well, he's real quiet, but he managed to rasp out these words. The Pope says modern mankind is usurping God's place. Yippee! Go, man! <laughs> man, what do you say? I, you know, I, how can somebody like the Pope say this and not lose his job? What he is admitting is that mankind is more powerful than God. We're winning, right? We're able to kick God out. Right. If we can kick God out, then we're tougher than God is. Yay, us! Yeah, but I'm sure that is mean awesome, that awesome power that we've got there. He means as a, as, a, as, a, as a cry of hopelessness that we need to actually convert back or you're die. Not, you're not kowtowing to my organization enough. Oh, my God. I can't do a Polish Pope accent. Is, if the Pope is hopeless, I mean, I don't know why people are still following him if he's hopeless. Well, you know, well, hey, they've known about the uh, scandal uh, uh, of pedophile priests for years, mm -hmm. and they still follow. Even the parishioners yeah. have known about it. This has not been a secret. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the longer I listen to this stuff... It's not a secret to, to people who aren't Catholics. Longer you listen to this stuff? I don't know. I always wanted to be one of those just, you know, very friendly atheists that, you know, didn't didn't hate other people we're just thought you, they were you're wrong. We're making you angry. Yeah, you're making, it's making me making, very making angry. More I thought maybe Catholicism was just a very interesting way of life that makes other people happy and makes their lives make no, a little bit more sense to them. They're a bunch of lying shit bags. No, they're just the <laughs> biggest <laughs> cult I have ever seen. Yes, they are the best. They're, 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 they're the biggest of the cults. Yeah, it they're is all the cults, ultimate and they're just a big one. Yeah. Uh, let me let me actually give you his own words here. Uh, Pope John Paul II, at the highlight event of a profoundly emotional visit to his native land, told a crowd of at least two million Poles here today, that was uh, August 18, that mankind was going dangerously astray by letting the scientific advances and cultural liberalism eclipse mm. God's will. The evil L word. Oh, no. Fricklet, Brintley, man. I can't do Polish. What does Polish sound like? I, 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 I was going to do Hindu. Brussels is Man lives as if God did not exist in even Polish. Something God's place, the Pope said. Can you do Polish? Can you do Polish accent? Where's Polish? Well, our dad and our grandpa. Actually, I think Polish sounds somewhat like the cliche Transylvanian accent. Ah, frequently, but... <laughs> Frequently man lives and I still can't do it. <laughs> I'm yeah, right. Right. Frequently man lives as if God did not exist and even put Frequently himself Frequently man lives as if God did not exist and even put in God's place, the Pope said, using his homily uh, during an outdoor mass of breathtaking dimensions to make the most pointed and topical remarks of his three day homecoming. He claims for himself the creator's right to interfere in the mystery of life. He he's not like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he claims for himself the creator's right to interfere in the mystery of yeah, if case you're doing, man. If you're, the, if you're doing the Pope, you should just do the South Park Pope, who sort of sits in a chair and drools and goes, <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Oh no! Have I made this story at all clear to anybody out there, or am I breaking it up no. and doing funny, funny I'm ghosts? sorry, I wasn't listening. Should you say that again? <laughs> all right. He claims for himself the creator's right to interfere in the mystery of human life. He added, speaking in Polish and referring to a range of issues that clearly included abortion, cloning, and euthanasia. Rejecting divine law and moral principles, he openly attacks the family. How? No, we don't. You. Bastard! We do not attack the family. Families are great. Yeah. We love families. We love 
all kinds so of families. families. In fact, we, we love, love them so much that we don't want to bruise our children. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's true. That, that, that Catholics, relates to are, another story, Catholics are not the most egregious abusers uh, of... of well, uh, they may be the most egregious, most sexual, egregious abusers. sexual abusers of children, but not physical abusers of children oh, in, okay. the, in the corporal Oh, I think Protestants have got a mark, cornered the market on that one. And, and particularly, Maybe Muslims, Particularly too. your, your fun, fundamentalist Baptist types. Yeah. yeah. Um, N- not to name any names or anything. <laughs> <laughs> to bl- the blame for this, he went on to say, lay partly with the noisy propaganda of liberalism of freedom without truth or responsibility. Freedom without well, truth. Fuck or, yourself, how do you have Mr. freedom Pope? without truth and responsibility? How do you have anything without responsibility? Where's your truth, Mr. Pope? Yeah. I would like to see. Oh, and where's truth. your responsibility? I'd like to see. Yeah, where's your responsibility <laughs> for what y'all, what your organization has been covering they have, up? They have a term for and that. And where's the proof that your God even frickin' exists? Well, they have a they have a term okay. for that. It's a pot calling the kettle black. We are we atheists are all about freedom with truth. Because of mm-hmm. truth, about confronting the actual truth rather than just making shit up. Okay. And with responsibility. I mean, everything oh, that all, all of our actions. Like, there's no Catholics should talk about responsibility oh, yeah. until they own up to this stuff they've been doing. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read a whole bunch of my correspondence this time like I did last week. But yeah. I am still um, trading emails with this guy uh, whose letter I read last week and. Um, and he 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 basically he basically came up with the oh Stalin was an atheist and killed a lot of people yeah. so atheism is bad shtick yeah, right right they said because Stalin didn't recognize that human worth comes from a uh, supernatural power <laughs> he didn't take the value of his own citizens seriously and I said look dude my defini- my dictionary defines worth as a couple of things that you can't apply because they if you apply that thinking to human beings, you got slaves, which Christianity, of course, is all into. But I'm Slave not. religion. And then there's and then there's um, uh, other terms that are synonyms for worth, like uh, like um, value. value and oh god, I can't remember merit and stuff like that. All things that come from actually doing stuff. And being able to do stuff and learning stuff. And so what's really going on is Christianity denies that human beings have any real worth. They mm-hmm. think the only worth human beings have is what they get from their supernatural force, the existence of which they cannot prove. And they deny that human worth comes from the capabilities of human beings, yeah. that we have our own worth because <clears throat> of what we can do. Now, what was that quote again? Which one? The one about worth and... Uh... Uh, responsible freedom, oh, the freedom Pope? from religion. The blame for the humanity usurping God's place uh, lay partly with the noisy propaganda of, of liberalism, of freedom without truth or responsibility. Hmm. Interesting. I think I think freedom you get that's supported by religion is freedom without truth. Eh. Right. Freedom based on hey, look, we got human beings living on a planet. We got to get along. We don't like it when we have horrible lives. We don't like it when we haul off and just kill each other. We like to have some structure. We like to have some organization. We like to have some peace. We like to get along. We like to accomplish things. All of that comes from just the existence of human beings living together. It has nothing to do with God. And it requires an enormous amount of responsibility. Yeah. It's all about responsibility. You have to be responsible. Black. But anyway. Yeah. The Pope uh, do you got something on the uh, the Florida guy? The Florida guy who... Yeah, because I do that I have the follow-up to, so I want yes, to do that story I next. Yes, I do. The, the guy who says spanking with bruises is yeah, okay. Yeah, speaking of, speaking of uh, you know, this uh, man, child abuse. In Tallahassee, the man named Thursday by Governor Jeb Bush to head the Florida's notoriously inept child welfare agency is an evangelical Christian who views spanking that causes, quote, bruises or welts as acceptable punishment. The governor introduced Jerry Rieger, a former Oklahoma cabinet senate and aide to Bush's father, as the new chief of the state's Department of Chi- Children and Families, yeah. Rieger was w- recommended by Bush fellow Repu- <clears throat> Bush's fellow Republican governor Frank Keating of Oklahoma. <laughs> Rieger, 57, was named less than 48 hours after the resignation of DCF Secretary Kathleen Kearney. Um, but in a 1989 essay entitled "The Christian Worldview of the Family," Rieger and co-author George Rikers or Rickers. I think it's Rickers, railed against abortion and gay couples forming families and emphasizes that husbands 
have the, quote, final say in the family dispute. And the essay declares that biblical spanking that leads to temporary or superficial bruises or welts do not constitute child abuse, despite the fact that the attorney, uh, an attorney with Florida Legal Services, uh, Deborah Schroth, uh, what was that? Oh, yeah, this the DC's new father that views, the DCF's chief views that, that of what child abuse is is contrary to Florida law. The essay also said Christians should not marry non-Christians and that divorce is acceptable only when there is adultery or desertion and that the wives should w- view working outside of the home as bondage. Yeah. The radical feminist movement Which, you know, has damaged the morale. Favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the essay says that the, radi- the, um, the radical feminist Just got to say something shocking every now and, uh, and then to keep people interested. Has damaged the moral <laughs> of many women work. and convinced men, to relinqu- <laughs> convinced men to relinquish their biblical authority at home. Yeah. Yeah. This, you hear right. that one a lot. Um, now, that story came out last week. Yeah. And I have a follow-up. Go ahead. Uh, Jerry Rieger, named as the new chief of Florida's Child Welfare Agency, distanced himself on Friday from some of the more radical statements in a 1980s essay that carries his name, but said he is nevertheless an evangelical Christian who believes in the scriptures as a guiding force. Though he is listed as co-chairman of the committee that put out the report, Rieger said he did not author the piece. The Christian worldview of the family... Uh, that's, that's the name that's of the thing. The report. He says he hasn't read it in years and disagrees with many sections, including one that says biblical spankings that cause bruises or welts should not be considered child abuse. I don't think that's appropriate. I don't think that's ever appropriate, he said. Rieger said his own four children were occasionally struck, but never to the point of injury. Quote, I believe that children should be disciplined and that it's periodically acceptable to spank a child, Rieger said. You know, and there, are, uh, of course, I have great sympathy for the people out there who think that that should never, ever, ever be done. I don't have children. I don't think it's my place to say. But it is great that he is at least backpedaling like mad from what that pamphlet said. Uh, more quotes. Some parents inappropriately use their beliefs, particularly Christians, to justify wow. injuring their children. And I think that's absolutely wrong, Baker said. <laughs> particularly Christians. Mm-hmm. Rieger, uh, he went on to say, uh, child abuse is horrific. I will do everything I can to stop the abuse of children. If you look at my record of involvement, you won't find I've been lobbying to soften laws defining child abuse or the punishment of child abuse. So, uh, I hope that that is not just political posturing or that if it is, that he is posturing that way because he realizes that those views will get him booted out of office, right. and so he simply won't act on them no matter what he actually believes. Uh, either one would be fine by me. Yeah. Um, now, there was another story in... Uh, oh boy, I didn't bring this in, but um, there's a there's a, a county or city in Florida that has anti-gay, um, anti-gay uh, uh, prejudice... Legislation, you're not allowed to discriminate against the gay community. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was challenged about 20 years ago, if any of you recall, by Anita Bryant. Anybody remember really? Anita yes, Bryant, really the orange really. lady? Uh, you're maybe yeah. too young. Uh, <laughs> but but there, there is a new movement in that part of Florida now to challenge that and get. If I'm not mistaken, Anita Bryant is is sort of a fundy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah she she spearheaded the previous. Attempt to get that struck down right. like 20 years ago. And so much for her reputation. <laughs> okay. What else you got? Oh, I got some good news. Yeah, let's have some good news. Uh, good news is that for the first time, a court has put on hold some of the new government funding to promote sexual abstinence, finding that certain abstinence programs in Louisiana are in violation of the constitutional separation of church and state. A federal judge there has ordered the state to stop giving the money to these groups to, and, fa- and face a trial. In February, the injunction ordered earlier this month comes just as the Bush administration is trying to increase national spending on abstinence and provides a window into the legal question, (laughs) questions that arise when public funds are allotted to groups ranging from the crisis pregnancy center to the center. What is is all this spending on abstinence? abstinence. I know you can pay money for sex, (laughs) but I also know you don't have to pay any money not to have sex. Well, spending... Abstinence is free. Spending on... This is government waste at its worst. I'm telling you. (laughs) Spending on the promotion of abstinence in school. Instead of sex education programs, (laughs) you're taking me way too seriously right now. 
not right well, here. I'm giving our opportunity. You know, some people out there going, what's he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, $200 for a hammer. Yeah. You don't think that money. $20 not to have a hammer. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. <Go> ahead. <laughs> Federal spending to discourage sex outside of marriage has skyrocketed to a staggering one hundred and two million dollars per year. One hundred and two wow. million dollars per year to tell kids not to get a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> the Bush administration really the Bush administration <laughs> has asked for another thirty three million, which Congress may approve as soon as September. The law requires that programs that receive abstinence grants discuss contraceptive only in terms of its flaws and teach that sexual, sec, sexual activity outside of marriage is likely to be har- harmful psychological and physical effects. And provide retirement benefits for prostitutes? Uh, maybe so. Because that would be a valid use of that money. If you're going to put all those people out of, out of a job. Yeah. Uh, not surprisingly, religious groups... <laughs> what? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Surprisingly, religious groups that are spreading this message, at least in Louisiana, have crossed the line into outright proselytizing. Louisiana Abstinence Education Program, which distributes a mixture of state and federal funds to local groups, has received more than $1.6 million a year in federal funding since 1998, using the money in part to create a booklet that attributed the spread of sexually transmitted diseases in the United States to moral relativism. What? And, yeah, this is they printed this stuff on the tax dollar. Uh, the removal of God from the classrooms also is why we have children who are having children. Uh, the project also printed fact sheets that encourage teens to speak out against the prevailing culture, especially the activities that are bringing about the demise of our Judeo-Christian heritage, wow. all in the public dollar. Mm-hmm. The state's abstinence uh, project also funded uh, Rapides Stations Community Ministries, a group that used Bible-based lessons to teach abstinence. December was an excellent month for our program, stated one of its 1990 reports. We were able to focus on the virgin birth and make it appear that God desires sexual, sexual purity as a way of life. Make it appear. Okay, they're just submitted to being propagandist. Yeah. So, they're appealing um, to the virgin birth? Are they telling to, people for to abstinence. have kids? Yeah, uh, appealing to the, fir- the virgin too. birth for abstinence <laughs> programming, yeah. <laughs> See, God didn't have sex. A theater group that, a theater group that proclaimed itself Christ-centered received 29500 in government money. Its promotional material announced, Our belief is that sexual activity outside the commitment of marriage is offensive to the Lord we serve and should not be condoned or encouraged. Uh, amongst your own people, maybe, with your own money, but you shouldn't be taking state money that goes, goes to supposedly teaching sex education to maybe those people who aren't of your church. This is wrong. And many religious groups receive awards in the latest round of abstinence funding, which totaled $27.7 million. Among them were Florida Christian College, Roanoke Chapel Baptist Church in North Carolina, and at least seven Catholic organizations, including three in New York. The, huh. uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't even like a pronounce this. Eureka Center in Burlington, New Jersey, a group that received 50000 in abstinence funding this year and promotes health through trust in God, the center of life, physical, mental, and spiritual. Several Sources Foundation, the New Jersey group that receives $2.3 million in the latest round of federal grants, will teach abstinence in the Newark Public Schools and the local Catholic schools. Okay, wait, I have a question. Maybe I'm an idiot, but which part of this is good news? The, yeah, you said this was good. It is good. Because oh, there's this, a loss because they're, they're, they're being This has been put on hold by court. All this money, this is, I'm just describing where the money was going. All this money this. on abstinence. Yeah. The money on abstinence program is now on hold, and this is something. Now, wait a second. So now, if this passes, then we're not going to be teaching abstinence, but we're also not going to be, we're only going to be teaching that uh, well, the, pr- protected sex is is well, no, dangerous the because of its is, plot. The problem is so kids are going to have a lot of unprotected. No, sex. no, the whole the whole <laughs> the whole protected sex is bad because of its flaws. Thing is just analogous to evolution is bad because of open questions in evolutionary theory. Right. You know, it's what? just they they push abstinence by attacking. Other types of birth control, right? right? So, so that's part of their message. Oh, okay. When the money stops, that, those kinds of attacks will stop, too. They tear down the alternatives right. and then say, oh, we're the only game in town That's now. right. That's right. right. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's just horrible. I mean, a careful, uh, careful consideration of where the money is going to go to so that it doesn't go to these Christian groups who are going to proselytize, regardless of the idea uh, that they're supposed to be doing their work in a secular way. 
Yeah. So. Wow. Wow. Well, there we go. I mean, I think that abstinence is good, and I think that people should practice it. But in all reality, I think that people don't. And I think that if you're going to teach anything, you should teach to do things safely. I have, no problem, have, a world with, I have no problem with teaching people. abstinence to high school kids because they have better things to do with their time right now than get involved in sexual relations. But the truth is they're probably going to do that anyway. Yeah, the, wait, problem wait, wait, here wait. Is not, the problem here is not that it's abstinence. The problem is that these abstinence programs are all religiously oh, yeah, yeah. based and, and could, r- religiously yeah. justified. And that's the problem. You I mean, could teach abstinence. Not as having a, sex is a perfectly valid option. You know, It's going to work. But the, it's not. They, they present it as the only way because, because God said so. Anything else is icky. <laughs> well, anything else is ungodly. And uh, oh, you, you need to keep that part out of it. You, know? yes. you can teach abstinence, saying, look, it's a good idea that you just wait for a while until you're a little more an adult to, to engage in these kind of activities. It'd do you a whole world of good. You have better things to think about at this time. But if you choose, and you end up going out and doing it anyway, at least you should know how to protect yourself. And they should be teaching that part as well. They should, yes. And, uh, they so, don't you know, do that you, now? They did when I was no, in school. No, they... Uh, well, these particular do. programs. That's what they object to. Yeah, these right. particular uh, programs. These guys are taking federal funding to try to destroy that. And these particular uh, programs that get money only their own are they're saying that you know these these uh, condoms don't work. Yeah. Use a condom, you'll probably end up getting pregnant, and you've already committed a sin anyway, so you're still going to go to hell. <clears throat> uh, I wish they would just admit what really bothers them. Yeah. Right. I wish they would admit they just don't like the idea of people having a good time. Even if their organs are wrapped in plastic, <laughs> they just don't like it. <laughs> right, it bothers. Yeah. They have they have this belief that sex is this thing that's you know you have to have this licensed contract to have, yeah, well, marriage certificate. Right. And and you know America well, is proof positive that that just ain't true in reality. People having sex all the time. They're all they're all all this stuff. These are just. Uh, everything that they do is just manifestations of their real concern, which is that their their income is being threatened. Mm. Right? If they don't control the process of marriage and of procreation, if that's not about, uh, you know, if that doesn't happen within the bounds of their belief system, then they lose people. Then you get then you get people who find out that hey, you know. This is actually fun, and <laughs> and what they told me at church was bullshit. And we're gonna go off and we're gonna go off and live our own lives, right? That those people stop giving them money, right? right? The families get married and have kids. Those kids do not get raised up as Christians. They don't become a new generation of people that are forking money over to the religious organizations. All this, you know, all this effort to take over sex edu- sex education to take over. Uh, the, the science education to take over the government to, to channel federal funds into efforts to proselytize is all about trying to widen their power base because they're losing it. Well, maybe another it. thing, and this is actually a debate that I had in one of my classes in high school, uh, in college, sorry, um, is that maybe they're worried that if people realize that they can have sex, mm-hmm without getting married, then they're worried that the institution of marriage will just stop happening altogether. Maybe people will realize that they don't actually have to be married to live happily together as a family. But why would they really be worried about whether the institution of marriage goes away? Why would they really care? These are religions we're talking about Because it's tradition. Because God says that marriage is good. I don't know. But but see, having having those marriages happen in churches, right... Having the big party and all the religious overtones to that is part of the process whereby they lock people into being part of their big organization. And once they've done that, that is a source of income. That's why they need that to happen. Okay. You know, if we just didn't have any marriage in our country, right? If we had some other scheme where, you know, okay, you establish paternity and then, you know, if you procreate kids, you're responsible for some amount of their upkeep and stuff, right? (laughs) We could have that. We could have no marriage whatsoever. We'd still get along. Right? Yep. We'd still have people who had families where they all chose to stick together anyway. But that opportunity, that important life uh, event, would no longer be within the clutches of churches. And so one major way that they could get control of people would be gone. They hate that. 
Like and they're not, not too fond of the uh, Americans United for their for church, separation of church and state either. No, I would imagine because, not. Well, spe- particularly in Alabama. And, oh, and I, should, <laughs> and, I should, and I should mention, it's not all about money. I mean, they really do think that two guys having sex is extremely icky. And that's just, that's just their, you know, their mm. um, sexual yeah, and they uh, also think uh, that identity being outside challenged. Of the home, working outside of the home is also kind of icky. That's, that's because these are, you know, men, male or run organizations. Right. And, they, well, but, I mean, and they're all of their, and all of the stupid kind of prejudices that you have even without religion are still rearing their ha- heads, except in this case, it's got the power of religion behind it, and they try to justify it that way. Well, but where does the institution of marriage come from in the first place? It's I mean, property why? Contract. Is it really? It's a property contract. When did mm-hmm. marriage start happening? Ooh, good question. <laughs> I imagine. Uh, well, you know the the idea of marrying for love has only showed up in yeah, the I'm last not. few centuries. Right, it's always been I mean, a, a, usually an arrangement. Just right. So I mean, since it the beginning of families. time, has there been marriage, or and or or did it start after people started deciding? Well, you should. What do you mean the beginning of time? There weren't know. people then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, since the beginning of civilization, since caveman days, did they have marriage? I, I imagine. Don't know. I, I imagine mean, animals. Animals mate. A lot of species will mate, even you know, for life, mm-hmm. and True. then other ones will. Yeah, the other ones copulate like wild the weasels. Right, but they, they don't... do mating ceremonies. And... <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, and of course that's so scientifically accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, is like it... having memories passed down by genetics? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, no. when they started having like, like legal or whatever institutions right. of marriage, have... was it about money? Was it about property? Was it, it about was God? Probably about. Uh, property. It was probably about property first. Because when you married inside uh, between families, you made a connection. So your lands there and our lands got to we all got to work together and we all benefited. Right. From that. There's so a It was for alliance, for for uh, and and for posterity too. I mean, you you get achieve something in life and you know you're going to die and so you want to make sure that you have descendants that you can pass it on to. Well, you don't if you don't know who they are. You don't know who to pass it on to. So right. you got to have you got to have a wife and you got to know that you're the only one having sex with her, and then any kids that come out of that are yours, and they are the ones that inherit worldly goods. So it's all that kind of crap. But even chimps have, you know, this structure where there's the one chimp, and he's doing all, he's spreading his genes and all, and all the little chimps are just getting it on the side, but if he catches one of them, he'll beat the snot out of him. Right. It's his territory. You don't do that. All so right. it's all territorial property contract kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's about getting, gaining more goods. And I'm personally not against it. I mean, I like being married. I like knowing that there is a person who I get along with extremely well, that we have a, we have made a commitment to each other, right? And so there, that erases a lot of the, you know, uh, a lot of the pressure and fear, frankly, of being single and wondering where you're next. <laughs> Sex is coming from right. You know, dating was horrible. I remember it. Yes. Uh, so, and so I actually stopped doing it for about three years prior to meeting Cassandra. Oh, yeah. ooh, me too. And uh, <laughs> just didn't date at all. And uh, then I met Cassandra. And what did me- meeting Cassandra do for you? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny no, she didn't no, mention it to me. <laughs> it was the stop dating for three years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh God. Three, three years because it was a horrible experience. It was a lot of work and it was a lot of bullshit. And. Uh, Got tired of doing it. Didn't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah but I mean, is the, the answer to dating on. really marriage? Because I mean, I know I, I know some people. My best yeah. friend's parents. Yeah. My my best friend's mother just got remarried. Uh huh. But she didn't get married legally. She had a little ceremony just because she wanted to have yeah. her friends and family come over to acknowledge that they are binding themselves to each other. Yeah. You know, and living together for their well, yeah. I lives. think that's all that really. But for takes. tax purposes, mm-hmm. yeah. they are yes. not considered married because right. it's actually cheaper for them or something. Yeah. To yeah. Just right. Not be you get in a higher tax bracket when you start combining incomes. Right. You end up paying more tax. Right. Then you can have some children and you get in- earned income credits now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It it's, so, it's so sick that, that, <laughs> that how you decide to live with your spouse ought to be, ought to be so heavily influenced by these, yes. this stupid red, t- red tape and regulations. I mean, I, I think that's all that it should take is getting together and making that commitment publicly, and then you know you got a then you got a partner. I mean, and that's nice. as cool as having a business partner. It's as yeah. cool as having any other kind of com- committed relationship. I think that's all great. But, but for, the ta- for the very reason it's the taxes uh, that determine whether you get a license is. 
proof that it's just a property contract. Yeah. Well, and the other thing about marriage is um, if uh, people think that divorce is like wrong and dead and evil and you should spend your entire lives with people. Uh -huh. But coming with the changing of the times and the changing of technology and the changing of people's lifespans, yeah. I mean, it used to be that you get married, you stay with them for 20 or 30 years, and then they die. Right. Now they're staying together for 60 70, 80 years? Yeah. I mean, I knew someone who got married to her husband when she was 17. She was Oof. 90 when he died. Wow. I mean, Are you, you saying she hated him by then? No, she loved him very, very much, okay. and she stayed with him. But, I mean, for a lot of people, I don't think that it's necessarily that people are a lot more frivolous and they're marrying people that they don't really love. I think it's that over a span of over 30 years, people actually do change. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that could be. I, I mean, in a span of five years. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of five years. But oh, I yeah. think uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing or that our, company, our right. country is losing God more than it has in the past. <laughs> that that means that the divorce rate hey, is besides, going up. Besides, the fundamentalists have a, the most divorces. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. So so that's all bullshit that that yeah. has anything to do with. What was right? I think they, it's just that the lifespan is going up, and that's what happens. I am, I am suspicious that in their case, the reason why they have such a, a, a higher divorce rate compared to other segments of the population is because they have no idea what the hell they're doing. They have yeah. no idea what the hell marriage is really about, right? What, what what the actual reason you might want to do it should be, right? It's they think it's They think it's some kind of obligation to God. They think they'll get in trouble if they get caught having sex, not being married. It's all this, all this other bullshit that makes them get married for wrong reasons. And, of course, that's where their whole child abuse thing comes from, too, well, because, yeah. I mean, they have children not because they want to have children, but because they feel like it's their duty. It's just what you're supposed to do. They got married, and she had wifely duties. He took advantage of that, and now he's got a housekeeper and a bed buddy. <laughs> that's what a fundamentalist thinks this place <laughs> for. It's his housekeeper and his bed buddy. I, I haven't heard any of them admit that. I don't well, they won't say it in that way, but they're saying that a wife should stay home and raise the children and not have and, a job. And and this whole bondage thing. What was that about? Bondage is... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they don't mean... <laughs> so... I have got to get a job. Getting a job, is, yeah, you'll, become, you'll become bonded. Woohoo! Slap on the chains of a job. Okay, so... Jeez. Um, where are we? Uh, would you we have a new story? Sure, yeah. So we'll okay, you do a story I have a Go ahead. Get, get us out of this whole marriage and sex. <laughs> <laughs> what can we well, talk about? Well, I get to be the token tree hugger of the group. So, okay. um, I've got You're a story. You're not just the about... token tree hugger of the group. You won't actually eat animals. <laughs> Yeah, I won't eat animals That's or bizarre. wear leather or um, or buy products of animals. commit animal cruelty. She couldn't even have she couldn't even have one of these raspberry newtons because it has whey in it. I don't even know what whey is. <laughs> no, it's a milk product. You yes, don't even do milk, milk products. No, no Why? nothing. How does it care if you drain their udders? <laughs> yeah, but they... Yeah, okay. This is the story. All right, this started. Is just, don't All right. get me started. Go ahead. We'll do a, a whole next show. episode. We can talk about the whole... Oh, yeah, that would be a whole show. Whether, whether atheists ought to, you Russell know, actually asked care me not more to talk about, about that on the show. About, oh, no, I, I think you know that you'd start dominating the show with it. Mm. That's all right. She can okay. next week. Go ahead. Okay. So there's an article in the news on uh, August 24th, or maybe that's just when I... August 18th. Uh, about ritual killings, uh, yeah. and and uh, ritual ki that's called ritual killings rate as cruelty police charge. Um, wait, wait a minute, ritual ritual killings of what? Ritual killings of well, apparently in Tampa, uh, there were some people that were found with their naked bodies covered in the blood of a dead goat, and the yard was strewn with chicken heads. Um, and doves. Dog that heads. is cruel. Oh. To paint a person's naked body with chicken blood. That's no, a no, horrible no. thing. Goat blood. Oh, goat blood. And that's a horrible chicken thing. Chicken heads everywhere. Yeah. So and, they, uh, they might, they're, if they're naked, they might step on those chicken heads. Those things can be sharp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's her first time reading the news in the show. <laughs> I'm not making it easy. Go ahead. So yeah, so they were found doing ritual cruelty, I mean, ritual, ritual, uh, uh, Killings to animals. This uh, is so we're animals. sacrificing these in animals Tampa. too. This what? is in, Ta in Tampa, Florida. Yeah, in oh, the United I States. I right. see. I yeah. saw that story and I didn't look at it because I thought oh, it's going to be one of those, another one of those crazy India things. Yeah, oh, this no. was probably. Yeah. Um, oh, good grief! This is local. It's probably it a Santeria, people. isn't it? 
It talks a little about uh, the release. Yeah, Santeria. It's Tell me they at least eat the animals after they've slaughtered them. Uh, I haven't gotten that far. I, okay. guess. <laughs> I don't see anything about eating the animals. Oh. I don't think they do. Um, Not that goat. The, the, the religion Santeria recognizes <laughs> one supreme being and several lower ranking deities called Orishas. Uh-huh. who can be appealed to for, for protection or favors through offering blood drawn from chickens, goats, ducks, and turtles. Right, as opposed to Jesus. <laughs> In the case of Christians, you got to yeah. appeal to what? them with blood drawn from Jesus. Oh, right. okay, good. Yeah, way it's a yeah blood what is with those backward people? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it doesn't blood. say anything about eating the animals afterwards, but a bunch of people yeah. bet- around, between the ages of 23 and 45... Uh, and it gives their names and addresses if you want to write them a good old letter, <laughs> were arrested along with a 17-year-old police officer. A 17-year-old police officer? What? Yeah, There's no such thing as a 17-year-old. No, no, well, no. It's seven, it, says a se- well, it, doesn't, it says a 17-year-old police, police identified, identified as... as Alfonso was okay. also arrested. He was not a police officer. He was well, police he was identified. identified as you, mis- you misspoke. All right. Okay. What? You said a 17-year-old police officer. <laughs> No. Well, he was a 17-year-old police. No. No. He's 17 a 17-year-old year old police identified. Police identified as... Bloody, is that guy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> See, you think reading the news is easy. It's not. It's not. <laughs> No, but, oh, okay, I see. I get it now. Okay, so there was also a 17-year-old that was arrested. Right. Anyway. Um, Why didn't so, they just say people ranging from 17 to 45? Then? Well, they, did, they didn't say people ranging from 17. They said uh, Milton a, Rodriguez, age 30, uh, Julio oh, Alleman, age 45, Max Oh, Lord, they just didn't give Texador, the idea. Texador, age 23, oh. and yeah, then Alfredo on. Texador, age 17. All right. I said that to try and shorten, shorten it, it. Which never happened. Which you guys <laughs> let me do, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, the in 1993, the U.S. Supreme Court recognized animal sacrifice as a religious sacrament and decided that it was protected by the Constituents' Guarantee yeah. of Religious Freedom. Right. Yet, in 1996, a Santeria priest in Miami was found guilty of one count of animal cruelty after a sacrifice. Um, right. So it's okay as long as you're not cruel to the animal who's had your severing. <laughs> The overriding issue is not the religious is is not the religious practice, she said. The issue here for us is the cruelty. Yeah. Okay. So right. so no cruelty to animals. Yeah, because doesn't well yeah. That I mean, would be infringing on other animals' rights. Wait a minute, but rights are derived <laughs> from a political process and animals cannot take part in the political process. Why not? But we but we but our political process can result in us giving them rights. We could yeah, do sure. that. Yeah. However, yeah, um, but I don't I, think people should just, you know, publicly be cruel to animals. But no, you should be cruel. But I'm a carnivore, and that's food. Yeah, that's so. <laughs> you uh, do it inside a nice sealed factory where I don't have to look at it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and I have eaten things that I've killed. Before. All right, let's but let's drop the whole let's all drop the whole vegetarian <laughs> thing here and uh, and uh, and move on to some other news. I get a lot of this. <laughs> yeah, well, we can do uh, the next episode. We can just talk well, about that subject. <laughs> and uh, I was considered. Uh, a lot of vegetarian, except I can only count on one hand the number of vegetables I can actually eat because they're gross. So I never could do that. I like all vegetables equally. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Do you think all vegetables you think, equally you think I, I just think like they all were I think so as not to discriminate against vegetables certain vegetables on the basis of their color <laughs> and texture. I think all vegetables are created content. equally under God. Yeah. But lettuce. <laughs> Absolutely. There's like nothing in lettuce. It. Sure there is. Not well, it depends much. on the kind of lettuce, I guess. Okay. But right, so I guess not all vegetables are equal. Let's move on. Romaine lettuce is better than iceberg. Is it? Hmm. <laughs> uh, you got a story. <laughs> Do I? Okay. Um, okay. Um, here's a little something to take this <laughs> off the, the question of religiosity and <clears throat> deal with our own internal atheist issues. Um, the Council for Secular Humanism has questioned the qualifications of two groups backing the Godless Americans March scheduled for November 2 in Washington. American atheists, the New Jersey-based organizers of the march, have invited all groups and individuals who sincerely declare themselves to be Godless Americans to be listed as endorsers of the march, a protest um, against a long list of actions and attitudes considered prejudicial to non-believers. Two of the many groups that responded, the Order of Perdition and the United Satanic Convenier, 
I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, describe themselves as Satanist, and Satanists, in the view of the Council for Secular Humanism, are insufficiently godless. Satanism is, Satanism is a religion with supernatural beliefs and a belief in the occult, said Tom Flynn, the editor of Free Inquiry, published by the Council. They should not qualify as endorsers of an event for godless Americans. The United Satanic Convenier responded with a long comment on its website. An unidentified leader of the group described himself or herself as, quote, a disbeliever in the existence of a medical, metaphysical being called God. Some Satanists have a deistic view of Satan, it was explained, but apparently not this one. The convenier promised <laughs> it would not arrive in Washington waving pentagrams and other para occult paraphernalia. As for American atheists, it is taking endorsers at their word that they are godless Americans. Ellen Johnson, the organization's president, told the Religion News Service that, quote, We're disappointed that the Council for Secular Humanism has decided to go public with this non-issue. She wanted all of the endorsers to work together and to strive toward unity in this march. Ed Buckner, the council's exec executive director, did not disagree with this last point. The issue is not closed, Mr. Buckner said, but the council is going full force forward with its support for the march. The problem, he said, was partly a public relations thing. Christian preachers frequently denounced nonbelievers as satanic. But there was more to it, he concluded, continued. Satanism dallies with supernatural beliefs that most atheists simply do not entertain. Groups that use invocations like Hail Lucifer, as the Order of Perdition does, are definitely, quote, not our style, Mr. Buckner said. That would be just as mistaken as saying, Hail Mary, full of grace. And on the AA website, the American Atheist website, yeah. the Ellen Johnson has a full response to this entire thing where mm -hmm. she essentially says, if they say they're non-believers, then we're going to take them for their word, regardless of where they come from. I take Christians for their word when they say they're Christians. Yeah, and, uh, so why not? We're not going to, we're not going to, tell these certain people that, you know, get into this battle of trying to find out who's just atheist enough. Yeah. Now, and, wait a um, second, but they're saying that they believe in Satan, but they don't actually believe that there is a God? They don't believe in God. It doesn't actually so, say in this article what they believe about Satan. Well, I've they're had discussions. I've had discussions with Satanists who say, I don't really, all we are is a group that has modeled itself on what Christians say about them. They just sort of embraced the imagery, but they don't actually believe in God or a physical Satan. Interesting. Um, and in fact, that's apparently pretty common. I don't know how common. I don't have statistics. Uh, I think the whole thing is nonsense. I think basing yourself on, the, on you know, a yeah. character, a fictitious character from somebody else's religion who is set up to be the fall guy... And then you make that your your I think figurehead, were, even figuratively, I think is re completely ridiculous. I think if you're doing it tongue in cheek, where you were just using that and saying through a Satanist, but you're really on the you know up and up, and you're saying, "Nah, we're just kidding about that." But that's, yeah. you know, since they call us that, we'll just claim that anyway. But still, what's the point? I don't know. I don't know. Now they sense. Satanists kill a lot of animals, don't they? Don't they do uh, occasionally, I've heard of. I've heard in the newspapers <laughs> where Satanists are doing blood rituals, but yeah. you know, personally, I don't know of any. I don't know any Satanists. Satanists. Yeah. So I try to avoid people like that. Yeah. This, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know that much about it. I just know that it creeps me out. And it <clears throat> creeps me out for basically exactly the same reason as other religions do. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, yeah. Cause, and cause I guess if you going call on it there. a godless march or whatever it's yeah. called, it is sort of a vague term that can leave it open towards yeah. Satanists. But and they were, they were, Ellen Johnson explains that they were intentionally vague about this to leave a wide door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but on the other hand, it could extremely embarrass the entire atheist community if we get some oh, you know, Satanists the, the up there. The media is going to latch on the fact that there were Satanists in the atheist movement. They're going to forget everything mm. else. Oh yeah. Well, that's Absolutely. possible. Oh, I can I can guarantee some media organizations, particularly the more Christian ones, are going to latch onto that. Look, they are really are Satanists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your county chum types. <laughs> I don't know about I that. have not forgotten her interview with the guy that got the uh, the Pledge of Allegiance case. New Dow? Yeah, New Dow. She, she interviewed New Dow and was a complete bitch to him. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's, um, that's, that's a tough issue. I mean, because on the other hand, atheism, 
does not mean you don't believe in this in any kind of supernatural stuff. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. No, it atheism is just atheism. It's not a supernaturalism. As much as I'd like it to mean that, because yeah. I think that really? there's not much of a case to be made for atheism if you admit to the existence of supernatural stuff in the first place. Interesting. Right. Hey, maybe I can bring my Ouija board to Godless Gamers on Monday night. That would be there lots you of go. fun. Play Ouija. No. <laughs> you have to read some rights. You don't want a Ouija board do. anyway. So many, I have a residual from when I was a kid. So oh, okay. They gave it to me. It's they're fun. They're. they're <laughs> no. All right, but. Um, <laughs> Okay, I forgot what I was going to say. Never mind. Uh, we were talking about um, whether atheism involves belief, a lack of belief. Yeah, I, I personally, I mean, I, we, uh, most of us, at least in our group, uh, when we claim atheism, that's exactly what we mean. We have no belief in the supernatural whatsoever. Yeah. But that's I not mean, exactly what really it means. You can't really defend the word that way. Yes, exactly. You have to. Wait a, a second. Deeper so define that. atheism. A is without, and theism is. It, the, theism is belief in God. So oh. if you don't have belief in God, you're an atheist. Even if you think you're telepathic. Or if you think that sacrificing a frog is going to make somebody fall in love with you. You know, I mean, you can believe all that stuff as long as you don't believe in a god. I should try that. Um, so, do you want to cut the head off a chicken and wipe its blood on your naked body? Those guys, guys, those guys are good. <laughs> those guys are good. <laughs> no, I think, I think the, the real issue is that the best defenses of an atheist worldview, right, the best justifications involve rejecting all kinds of supernatural stuff or lead to rejecting all kinds of supernatural stuff. And so not rejecting it undermines the best arguments there are in favor of atheism. That's right. my take on it. So I, I strongly encourage all atheists that I know to That's interesting. That kind of so stuff that out. my mother right. could actually be considered an atheist because she doesn't necessarily believe in God. She just sort of believes in, as she calls it, a spiritual internet. A spiritual internet. We're all connected to some kind of mystical force. Yeah. Yeah. Like technically, that. as long as she doesn't believe in a god. Uh, yep. Well, she could, she could be an atheist. She could make the claim for herself because you really can't label somebody an atheist. I couldn't go Why to somebody not? on the street and say because he doesn't have this right religion, he's an atheist. That'd be no different than than the, the Christian who says, "Well, that atheist is a Satanist." Uh, he's yeah. making a bold claim that he doesn't know. No, no clue well, about. but if you have a guy who worships Satan and claims he's an atheist, uh, he's still a Satanist. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you can't just say words mean whatever the uh, guy who's using them says they mean. Otherwise, I, I see we have a healthy discussion of this going on in the chat room right now. Yeah. Speaking of which, let me just remind everyone: uh, we do this show live once a week on Saturdays from 2 to 3.30 Central Time. And during that time, if you listen to our show at the uh, Atheist Network website, www.atheistnetwork.com, and click on the chat link, you'll find yourself in a chat room with other people listening to the show, and you can, uh, you can discuss comes. things we're talking about um, while we're on the air. Uh, so, uh, so you might want to keep that in mind. That's right. especially I, I fun can thing tell you what they're talking about right now. Yeah? Uh, they say... Uh, they're the, two and a half minutes behind the us. Satanist, well, yeah, but... Uh, the Satanist movement uh, that exists doesn't really believe in a literal Satan. Uh, they're just sort of reacting to Christianity. And, yeah. Same thing we just said. And yeah. they're mostly agnostics and stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, if they're saying that they're right. atheists or agnostics but, 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 or non-believers of some in the gods of some Christ, then by the criteria for this march, they qualify. Yeah. yeah. Even though as I personally, as it yeah, may I personally be. have a, a reservation about them showing up. Yeah. Um, because I, I have, I am, I am certain that the media will latch onto the fact that there are atheists in this non-believers march, and they'll the, the, promote they're, the they're idea Satanists that atheists are Satanists. Yeah. And that's what the newspapers are going to do, because that's going to get, that's going to get them readers. Well, the it may well be uh, the, the op-ed pages and those of us that go will have to be extremely careful in what we yeah. say. Um, <clears throat> okay. So we um, don't. We can face. And there's another article from the Star Tribune about atheists facing intolerance from for being non-believers. Yeah, this was awesome. The Star Tribune did this big article and uh, and then a poll. Why don't and we, a poll. Uh, the, we uh, talk about that? The article uh, essentially listed a bunch of people who were giving a bit of their own personal experiences being an atheist. I picked out one because yeah. there were quite a few, and I didn't want to get too carried away. And this one was a man named Bill, who's now 55, who says when he was growing up. It was, or, quote, not going to church was the equivalent to killing somebody. 
And now his 11-year-old son, David, is learning about prejudice firsthand. David says, when I was little, at recess, I challenged the story of Adam and Eve, and the other kids would get really, really mad at me, and I would lose a friend. I think each one of us have a story like that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, where you've, you've, you've talked about religion, and then someone who's your friend turned away from you because now you're not, you're not, you don't think right. I don't and really this, have a story like that. Really? But, but I, I didn't, do. I didn't become atheist until I was in my mid-twenties. So you missed all the, yeah. See, I was in, I was a child. I was an agnostic until yeah. then. I just uh, wanted to not pay any attention to it. I did a lot of agnosticism. As, as, as a kid growing up, because that was a safer way to do it. But this kid also says that That's another time in class. That's a word, Amanda coined that word. Yeah. There's people that just want to stay away from the issue completely because it's controversial and uh, tends to cause arguments. <clears throat> yeah. I always had a really huge crush on a guy that, that knew I was an atheist, and he just kind of very matter of factly took the position well, I, I accept the fact that you're an atheist. It just makes me very sad that you're going to hell. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard that word. So he didn't refuse like to be my winner. friend. Yeah. Right, well, obviously that didn't go anywhere. But he, so he, you know, he, 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 uh, lost my train of thought. Never mind. No, no, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. In this, in this, oh. uh, in this email correspondence I'm having, this guy. What? You want to go? Uh, I didn't actually, I mean, I didn't actually lose him as a friend. He was yeah. still my friend. I mean, he was, right. he was, we went out dancing together all the time. He was actually there was a dancing, barrier but between your relationship. Pretty much, yeah. Due to that one thing. And I've got lots of stories like that. Well, in the, in this email correspondence <clears throat> I'm having, this guy keeps say, saying, read this passage, read this passage, read this passage from the Bible, right? <clears throat> it's all, God loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus sent his, represents God's love. You know, it's all this, all this, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. And I just brush it off and say, dude, Bible says, if I don't join your club, I deserve to suffer eternal torment. I don't care how many times the Bible says that God or Jesus love me. If they think I deserve eternal torment for not being part of their club, they don't love me. And yeah. saying that they do is not only false, but sadistic. You know, Ginny asked me that question the other day, and I just can't come up with an answer for it. She said, now, Karen, have you read the Bible? And I said, yes. And she said, where in the Bible does it actually give evidence that God loves you? Anywhere. Um, in the entire well, Bible. Haven't well, you ever heard there are many all the Christians quoting 316, John For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, God loves us so much, he killed his, killed yeah, his own it kids. Yeah, it specifically says God loves each and every and, one and of And I have a good one. If you, got, if you go with the fundamentalist interpretation that Jesus is the embodiment of God, what you have is God killing God to appease God. Yeah. So, Freakish, huh? Yeah, that's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this guy doesn't get it. He just uh, yeah. he's, he is able well, somehow in his mind to, it, to contain the, the, you know, the completely contradictory ideas of... He's supposed to love me, and he's supposed to believe that I deserve to suffer eternal oh. torment, no matter what I've actually done. Not only that, you were born that way. You Forever. were born deserving yeah, eternal because torment. because of, right. Original I'm, sin. Right. Which, uh, and whose fault was that? that God set that up for, for the lose, to, for Eve to lose in the first place. So, yep. you know, he's supposed to be omnipotent. That he we'll knew that. We'll see. Anyway, this article had a couple of other interesting things in it. One uh -huh. was the... Uh, the statistics from the Graduate Center at University of New York that showed nearly 180, 168 million Americans subscribed to some religion in 2001. And of that number, nearly 160 million identified themselves as Christian and 7.7 .7 million identified themselves as other religious groups, including Jewish, Muslim, Islamic, and Buddhist. Unitarian Universalist. 14%, this is where the 14% of atheists comes in, where we keep hearing this quote all the time, or 29.5 million reported no affi religious affi affiliation. Not the same as being an atheist. No, this, not. This particular article said that of that number, of that 29.5 million, 900,000, just one fourth, four tenths of one percent, identified themselves as atheists, actually identifying themselves as an atheist. So it gave a little more accurate... Uh, I'm, I'm skeptical of that figure, not only because I, I know that uh, more than four tenths of one percent of the people that I meet during the course of a day are atheists, mm -hmm. but also because I've never seen that figure before, and I, so I doubt we're talking about the same poll. Hmm. I'm skeptical. Well, that deserves some more research. So if anybody knows and anything better, please tell us. Right. Didn't they? But on the other hand, it could either. include all those militant agnostics that want to insist that nobody can know either way. Could be, in but that, that, but, but yeah. don't believe themselves. You know. I, you, 
You throw in all the people who are effectively atheists, even if they don't know it. Right. Yeah. So maybe that's um, it. Uh, sorry, I'm throwing this back a couple of minutes, but I'm searching the Bible for love and and Jesus together. Yeah. And I find a whole bunch of verses of Jesus saying he loves someone, some specific person. Uh-huh. And I find a bunch of verses saying if you love Jesus, then you'll do this. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. If you love, that's like that girlfriend in the back right. seat. If you love me, you'd do it with me. Yeah. Uh, so far, so far, no. Wait, when is it the girlfriend that does that? So far, there is no Jesus loves each and every person on earth. Uh, still See, Jesus though. loves the little children, all the children of the world. Isn't that's that in the Bible? Bible. <laughs> Damn it. Well, that's a little song. Damn it. That's all right. Too. Yeah. Uh, that's Andrew other... Lloyd Webber, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. No. The, um, the other one, an interesting thing from this article was a instant poll that said, yeah. would you let your children play with the children of atheists? Surprisingly, out of the 1,032 people who answered this poll, at the time that I read it, 741 or 72% said yes, they'd allow their children to uh, play with atheists. Um, no's were 12% at 22. The m- question, maybe it depends on the person's the person and not their beliefs, was 22%. And... The answer, yes, but I'd ask the parents not to discuss their view with my children, 13%, and no, it would offend my religious rights. 3%. It was 3? It was 1% at the time I got it. It looks like you've written in some Oh, oh, no, no, no. I see. That's a line. That's the little Uh, bar. uh, 3%. I'm sorry. Yeah, 3%. Yes, uh, but I'd rather not, the parents not discuss this 3%, not 13. Right. Which means that uh, one's 2%. That's a 2% to say no. I said 12. That's the same thing. That's the little bar graph is not in color here, so it's throwing a monkey wrench in my reading. But 1% said no, it would uh, offend my religious beliefs. But yeah. 72% of people would still let their children play with children mm-hmm. who are, had atheist parents. Now, the one that really puzzles me is maybe it depends on the person, not their beliefs. I would have thought uh, that would how be How much, one. I mean... In fact, that's the answer I gave. Really? Yeah. But... Oh, I see. If you had, I if see you had some little saying. degenerate children with some bad family, I'm not letting my children go hang out with them. I don't oh. care what they believe. Yes, I'm looking at this from the perspective of, you know, the majority of Christians responding to this. I, I think they'd have to care what the beliefs were of the person in question. I mean, hmm. when when it when you say, you know, I, I don't see any difference between a person and their beliefs. A person's beliefs are going to tell me what they think and how they're going to behave. Right. Well, right. but I mean, there's more to it than, uh, there's more to a person's... That's true. There's more to a person than their than just belief in God. Okay. I mean, because there's enough. a lot more beliefs involved Fair than enough. just God, too. I guess I can understand that now. Yeah, and uh, like I said, I would not allow my children to go down the street and play with the uh, children who were, you know, whose parents are dealing drugs out the house and they're, the children are little degenerates and always get into trouble and the cops are around all the time. I'd keep my children away from that. Yeah. It wouldn't matter if they were atheist, agnostic, yeah. Christian, whatever. Yeah, I understand that. So that was my my personal answer was yeah. maybe it depends on the person, not their belief. Um, uh, I got another story here. Remember the um, remember the Summum cult? I think we've talked about them yes. two mm-hmm. weeks in a row now. Uh, okay, so the Summum cult went to this town in Utah and said, "You guys got to let us put up our monument with our fourteen. What were they called? Their uh, uh, their um, their 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 an analog of the Ten Commandments." And um, and it went to court, and they won. And so this, that that city last they we won? reported, yeah, they won their court case. The city has to let well, them put up that monument if they're going to have the Ten Commandments there. They have to allow oh. all religious groups access. Uh, yeah. Then the last we reported, they the city was uh, Ogden, Ogden City was um, was reviewing their options and trying to figure out a way to fight that. Well. Afterward, here's this is the follow-up. Afterward, the attorney for Summum, Brian Barnard, wrote the Tool City attorney, Roger Baker, to inform him that the court's ruling also applies to identical monuments provided by the Fraternal Order, Order of Eagles in Tool, Roy, and Murray. These are all towns in Utah. Tool Mayor Charlie Roberts said he'd prefer to allow Summum to erect its own monument rather than remove the Ten Commandments from City Hall grounds. It's a non-issue, Roberts said. So this guy... Want to just cave in and say, "Fine, put up your put up your own silly monument." Though the mayor's suggestion would seem to put an end to the debate, it now appears that Robert's proposal was not good enough for Barnard. 
the attorney has fire, fired a second warning shot across their bow. In a letter to the mayor from the attorney on behalf of a client that resides in Toole County and other interested parties, Barnard told Roberts, please remove the monument from the city's property. Barnard's letter states that the city has 10 days to respond, after which, quote, I will assume that litigation is necessary and proceed accordingly. So this guy is now pursuing this issue, but not for Summa. Uh, later in the story, it reports that, that Corky Ra, leader of the <laughs> Summum cult, had, was basically oblivious to what, all this stuff going on. As far as he was concerned, he was just trying to get his monuments put up. But this, this, this guy has got another client, hmm. uh, in this other county that he's gone to, and together they're going to try to just get these things taken down. So what it appears to me is that his original angle, getting him to put up another monument, thinking that they would never do that, yeah. that they would rather take theirs down than have some other religion have a monument up, yeah. backfired on him. They went ahead and said, okay, put your monument up, so he couldn't use that as a weapon to say, no, you won't let these people put their monument up, so you can't have the Ten Commandments either. Yeah, I think I think it was a mistake for him. If he has a new client and he's representing new people, and we talked about this before the show, and I just noticed this this extra bit in there, yeah. so I, what I said earlier now, is exactly right. But but it seems to me that the lawyer made a mistake going to them first saying, let us put up a sum of monument or else we'll sue. He should have just said, if he's representing different guys, he should have just said... Take that it's down, it's a violation of the Constitution. Right. Instead, he that brought up this completely irrelevant sum of thing first, which right. was silly. Mm. I mean, there are actually 614 commandments in the Jewish Torah. Uh, we should put that up, too. And, and way more uh, rules in the Code of Hammurabi than that. Yeah. yeah. Though that's not really a religious document. Sorry to know. No. Um, Barnard asserts that the presence of the religious monument or any religious monuments is a violation of the established clause, Establishment Clause clause of the U.S. Constitution, which is another silly thing for him to say, because he is now attacking the right of the Summum group that he represents in the other case <laughs> to have their monument up. So, yeah. So that's all gotten very confused, and we'll, we'll bring you whatever new developments we He doesn't find. care what he argues. He's getting paid for it. Uh, apparently. <laughs> he's got yeah, money from somewhere. He, but shouldn't he not directly attack his, Former other, his other client on a, in a different case? I guess that's well, over, he, isn't it? Yeah. So it doesn't doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. He won that one and got paid for it. Now yeah. he's getting paid to defeat that one. I guess. I guess so he's so, fighting yeah. these for the wrong so reason. He's just looking for profit. <laughs> well, it may be. That may be. So. so what do you got, Vic? Well, I got the fact that it was God's will, well, according to this one fella, that 353 asylum seekers drowned when their overcrowded boat sank on its way to Australia just under a year ago. The people smuggler who organized the voyage from Indonesia told it Australian television. Egyptian Abu Kwasi, awaiting a court ruling in Indonesia on Thursday over visa violations, told the Australia's, told Australia's government-owned special broadcasting system that he planned to give up the life of smuggling to find an honest job. Well, Plus, that's good, though, isn't it? That's good, but... He got, he got 500 and... What is it? 353 people killed. Yeah, at 500 bucks a pop. Hey, you know, stick a fork in that profession, move yeah. on. Um... Kwasi has not been charged in Indonesia over the deaths of the 353 mostly Afghan and Iraqi asylum seekers whose leaky vessel sank last October after its engines failed in the Indian Ocean, and only 44 people survived. Kwasi said he was shocked when he heard on television that the news that most of his clients had died. Now, I quote, I want to find another business now. Whatever. I've become a taxi driver. I have a child and a wife, and I want to make clean money. Okay. So, so you're you admitting that you're a driver. scumbag and you took people's money to send them on a leaky boat so they could drown. Are you, you just mad because he that? hasn't been charged? Uh, I think he ought to be charged. He ought to be charged with their with their deaths. This, okay. It's his boat, his his job. He got them on that boat. He took their money to get them on that uh, boat, sent yeah. them across the river, and they mm -hmm. died. Yeah. All right. Um, he says, I I tried to look out after their souls, but it was God's decision. He's, what? He's just pronouncing all blame for this whatsoever. God chose to drown those people, not he him. He tried to look after their souls. So his company boat was well stocked with copies of the Koran. Uh, maybe it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, according to the statement on the broadcaster's website, on the broadcaster uh, in Australia's website, the people smugglers said the passengers each had paid about $500 to get into Australia's rem most remote I uh, Christmas island, where they hoped to uh, lodge an asylum claim. Indonesia has rebuffed a bid to have quasi extradited to Australia, where he would have faced people smuggling charges. So, the, so they don't even want him. They, no, no, the, the Indonesians will not send him to Australia. They're they're, they're fighting oh, extradition. Oh, I see. 
And so oh, uh, I got he's getting away with this. Hmm. And he's going to blame somebody else, namely God, for drowning those people. I'm sorry, I have many copies of the Koran. They have their, they have many, all, all the chances I could give them to save their souls before they drown. <laughs> <laughs> that is the important thing. Now I should become a taxi driver. And, yeah, because now he wants to have an honest job. He knows what he did. He knows what he did, got people killed. And he's going to use God as a scapegoat. Yeah. Uh, I didn't drown those people. God did it. Phew. I know um, a joke. You know a joke. I know a joke kind of about that. Okay. Except I've only ever heard it once, so I don't know if I'm going to tell it well. But, but there's this guy, and he's stranded in the middle of the ocean, and he's, he's praying to God to save him, mm-hmm. to get him out of this horrible situation. And this this uh, helicopter comes by and sees him and says, come on, we'll help you out. We'll take you to shore. And he says, no, no, no. God will protect me. God will save me. And he, and he sends them on their way. And then he prays to God and he says, please, please get me out of this situation. And then this, this boat comes by, this like, you know, carnival uh, tour boat, you know, comes by and says, oh, are you stuck? Let us, let us help you out of the water. And, uh, and he says, no, no, God will protect me. And he sends him on his way. And, and then, you know, he, a while later, he's still praying to God. He's like, get me out of this situation. And, you know, a little, uh, uh, I don't know, something else comes by. And he says, no, no, I, I've got it covered. God will protect me. And eventually he drowns. And he goes to God and he stands in front of God and he says, why didn't you protect me? And God says, I tried. I sent you a helicopter. I sent you a hot air balloon. I sent you a boat. And you just kept sending him away. Anyway. <laughs> that's a joke. Yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> Don't you know atheists have no sense of humor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, they're, uh, in the chat room, they're all still talking about out of context verses, which, uh, I, I mean, uh, stuff in the Bible that is, uh, you know, when it's the unpleasant stuff, mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, they say you're, you're taking it out of context, and Martin says, yeah, like John 3.16. <laughs> which everybody takes out of context because just two verses later in 318 it says but if you uh if you don't love me back then you better fear my wrath yeah. <laughs> definitely out of context then and uh it actually uh brings to mind the discussion that i've been having about franklin graham's statements uh was that mm. last week yeah. after we talked about franklin we talked about that right junior yeah. graham junior uh, oh yeah not Teddy. And uh, yeah, Franklin Graham. Uh, Franklin Graham said that Islam is a religion that teaches intolerance, unlike Christianity. Right. <laughs> uh, we did talk about that. Yes, right? I had the story last week. Yeah, and uh, I had a message board argument with some guy who came on and said, "You know, everybody's getting all upset about this, but he's right. And let's do a comparison of Christianity and Islam." And he listed all these points about how Islam says one thing and Christianity says another, and Christianity doesn't support uh, killing infidels in the name of Jesus and, or, or in the name of Christianity, and Islam does. And I said, is this the same God we're talking about who, uh, you know, ordered them to slaughter all the Midianites and, mm-hmm. and you know? And then he said, well, that was only in the Old Testament. <laughs> so what? <laughs> So what? But you have uh, Luke nineteen twenty seven, where Jesus using uh, says that um, that probably get me for out of context. They, these are the too. same people who are who gleefully think about Hitler suffering eternity in, uh, etern- eternity eternity in torment, right? Uh-huh. But not even for what Hitler actually did. No, right? Right. Says he, so Hitler suffering an eternity of torment in hell has nothing to do with the fact that he killed a bunch of Jews, uh-huh. right? That's conducted this big horrible war and was, a, and was, a, and was an Jesus. anti-Semite bastard. Huh? Yeah, yeah right. It's right all because he didn't accept Jesus. If he'd done all that and accepted Jesus, he'd be lounging in a cloud yeah, in heaven right now. Of course, they don't now. really know that he didn't accept Jesus. Oh, right. I mean, he did in the end, and hey, you get to heaven, Hitler's the doorkeeper. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hi-oh! Not to <laughs> imply, of course, that Hitler was an atheist because he wasn't. Uh, I get another story. Go ahead. Clearfield County Commissioners spurn bid to remove Ten Commandments courthouse marker. These guys are going to fight it. Ooh. Clearfield, Pennsylvania. The agenda for the Clearfield County Commissioners bi-weekly meeting carried a demand from an organization of area atheists to clear the courthouse steps of a 30-year-old marker bearing the Ten Commandments. 
More than 300 people squeezed into the county's main courtroom. Some sported T-shirts emblazoned with the stars and stripes, some wore crosses, some had clerical collars. And when the assembly opened with the Pledge of Allegiance, the crowd shouted the phrase, Under God. When it was all over three hours later, after the last of 74 people spoke his piece, the three commissioners agreed that despite threats of a lawsuit, the commandments will stay. Oh, at least until they lose the lawsuit. Until they lose the lawsuit, right. Yes, we want government to stay out of religion, and we want religion to stay out of government, John Suger, local lawyer and chairman of the county commissioners, said in a preface to his vote. However, this doesn't mean that every government building or function has to be sanitized of all symbols or expressions of our culture. No, it doesn't have to be sanitized of all symbols of expression of our culture, just the religious ones. <laughs> There's nothing in the Constitution saying you can't have... Uh, expressions of our culture there uh, uh, on government land. It just says you can't have religious expressions there. Right. And religion is not our culture. Religion is certain uh, people's culture. Even given them that much. Yeah. I'm just saying. You know, there's a question. specific thing they're not allowed to do, and yet they try to spin it. They make this straw man argument, right, that, oh, they're not just attacking religion, they're attacking every expression of our culture, which is a load of hooey. Yeah. If they take these Ten Commandments, this monument, down, yeah. who's paying money to have the monument taken down? Is uh, it the church or is it the government? Don't know. I don't, uh, I frankly, imagine. you're not going to find me suing to complain about them spending federal funds to take the commandments down. <laughs> yeah, and it would most likely Call me be nuts, a... But I'd, I'd let them get away with that. Most likely be a, a, a federal con or a government contractor of that particular government agency that paid the contractor to get that removed. But only because the courts tell them to. They wouldn't do it otherwise. They'll right. stay there. Right. You're the majority now, Lori Polanski, Western Pennsylvania Director for American Atheists Incorporated, mm -hmm. warned the sea of faces around her. But what do you do when it's 55% Muslim and you're told you'd better, by God, be bowing to Mecca five times a day or you're going to hell? How are you going to feel? We want the government to be neutral, Greg, Greg Swales, a local member of American Atheists, insisted. If any of you guys had an ounce of faith, you wouldn't even think of using govern government to convert the people. After warning that litigation will be very expensive, Ron Stauffer, president of the Altoona-based Keystone chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union, said he doesn't know yet if the ACLU will launch a court fight to remove the marker. But, you know, not he doesn't know for sure, but every time before they have followed up. Uh, uh, Suger, I don't know who this guy is. I must have edited this story. Uh, this other fellow guessed that all sides will sit back and watch the outcome of the challenge um, to a Ten Commandments plaque at Chester County Courthouse in, in suburban Philadelphia. There in March, a federal judge ruled that this display was unconstitutional, but the county is challenging the ruling before the Third U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, while the plaque by judicial order hangs covered pending a decision. I think we did that story before. Okay, we're uh, we're down to the last few minutes of the show. Um, do we want to do back pedophilia, or uh, I got a crazy, crazy story about a psychic? Go to the psychic. That was funny. Sharon, Pennsylvania, an Armitage man arrested for allegedly telling fortunes at his home claims he is a true psychic, and the state law against fortune telling is only for those pretending to have the supernatural gift. Mark D. D. Campbell, 40, was charged with fortune-telling, a third-degree misdemeanor, after police said he used tarot cards to read the future of an undercover Armitage policeman. Now, that, <laughs> I think, is a fine thing. You know, we have we have uh, uh, palm readers, readers and tarot card people here in Austin, and I have been dying to find out whether we've got anti-fortune-telling laws. They're pretty common. Mm -hmm. And I want to see Austin police going undercover and getting their palms <laughs> read and arresting... Laws. Oh, yeah, because it's a big frickin' rip-off. I've oh, yeah. never heard of that. Oh, yeah, it's real common. Uh, but Campbell, who claims he's had the gift for his whole life, <laughs> everybody can hear those scare quotes, the, the gift, gift. <laughs> uh, said he is not guilty. Absolutely not. Guilty of what, he asked. There is no offense if you are a true psychic, and I am a true psychic. <laughs> if he was a true Does psychic, then he should that? have known that this was going to happen. Wait, 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 get to that. Oh. Uh, according to the state law, someone is guilty of fortune telling if he pretends to gain, if he pretends for gain to tell fortunes or predict uh, future events through a variety of ways, including cards, reading hands, or consulting the stars. If I'm telling the truth, then how can it be pretending, asked Campbell, who has been telling fortunes professionally for 15 years. I have witnesses and clients who will testify that this is true, that my gift is true. 
He claimed that a local constable and other clients would testify on his behalf. You know what? That ain't the way to do it. I want to see. I want to see. Um, what is James Randi? James Randi in that courtroom testing this guy. Yeah. That's what I want. When he was asked why he didn't recognize that he was reading an undercover policeman's fortune, <laughs> Campbell said he sensed it, but got confused with another cl- another yeah, client. Yeah, please. Yeah. I always have this way to dance around it. All right. All right. We're so there move. we go. We're going to um, start playing some music. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the show. We will be back again next week. Maybe we will go into the vegetarianism thing. I think that's fascinating. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, we will leave you with the uh, with the Devo doing uh, 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 Planet Earth.